In this video, we are going to look at the Pixton PowerPoint add-in and how it enables you to make storyboards and comic strips in PowerPoint with multiple characters and multiple different poses. So this is very much doable in the PowerPoint online version. Uh, you can get the Pixton add-in there and you can do most of this, but we will occasionally take a look at the desktop version of PowerPoint because there are some, I would, I would call them embellishments. There's uh, some extra things that you can do with the desktop version. It is not needed, but again, it adds a little extra something to it. So let's get started. I am using PowerPoint online, doing this deliberately. Very often there's more features in the desktop version than the online version, but we want to show you that this can absolutely be done online, which means you can do it on Chromebooks. So I'm going up to the Insert tab because that is where I find add-ins. I want a blank screen, so I'm quickly going to get rid of the boxes that are on my slide. Again, the Insert tab is where you find add-ins. Pixton is an add-in, so we're going to click on add-ins and we're going to go to the Office add-in store. I'm going to look up Pixton and add it to my PowerPoint online. Okay, Pixton is a comic character creator. Now that I've added it, it's under my Home tab. Now, I don't see it on my Home tab, but if I scroll down under the ellipses, we'll find it. Lots of fun things under the ellipses. All right, what does Pixton do? Pick a character, pick an outfit, pick a pose, and if you'd like to, add a speech bubble. I do not use the speech bubbles in Pixton, and you will see why once we get going here. So I've picked a character, and before I go any further, I realize, oh, I don't want a white, plain background. I need to put in a background. So if I choose a background as a picture, the online version, I can only choose to upload an image. I can't choose an image from the internet. So you can see here on the desktop version, if I choose to format my background and choose a picture, I can insert and I can choose from a file on my device or an online picture. So one advantage of using the desktop version is you can search for a picture. Now I actually have this PowerPoint full of backgrounds and I'm going to add one of those. I actually created that PowerPoint exactly for this purpose, but what I did was I exported all of those as an image into this folder. So each one of those is now exported in the right dimensions for a slide for a background for other PowerPoints. As you can see these are some of the different ones that I have saved. And I like this one. We're gonna go with the outdoor forest glen with the light coming through. I'm gonna make four copies of this because I think I'm gonna make a comic strip with four cells. So now I'm gonna go back to choosing my character. I used to suggest that you would do, put all of your characters in the first frame and then duplicate your slides. And then whoever you didn't need in slide two, you could delete. But put everybody in slide one and then duplicate it. But now that I have Pixton, I instead recommend that you go through each of the slides doing this character. And then we'll back out and choose another character and go through each slide and add that other character. So when you use the text box, you'll see that if I shrink my character down to the proper proportions, if I have too much text in there, you won't be able to read it. And right now I'm running into... I have run out of spaces. There's only so many characters you can even put in this text box for exactly that reason. So you can see when I put this in, when I shrink him down to the right size, really tiny text. So what I like to do instead is insert a character without the text box and then use the text boxes that are in PowerPoint. So one slight difference between the shapes in the online version and the desktop version, you have all the same options. Okay, scroll down to the bottom to get to the callouts. You have just as many choices, but right at the bottom where the kind of the tail is, with the desktop version, you'll have the ability, you'll have a little, uh, I'm colorblind, I can't remember if it's green or orange, but there'll be a, an additional little dot at the bottom where you can drag that little pointy tail from the speech bubble down to the person. And on the online version, you just don't get that option. Now, if I open this in the desktop version, if I click on open the desktop app, I will be able to get that button where I can uh, redrag that tail and extend it more. And then if I come back to the online version, it will be saved that way. I've also changed the color of the shape and then I'm going in and change the color of the font. And right now I'm just sticking with the basic Calibri, but you can change the font to any of the fonts that are available in Microsoft Word. You can change the font colors. 
And you can make the inside of that speech bubble whatever color you like as well. So I didn't actually like the rectangular shape that I used before, so I'm going to try it with a round shape. Okay, my text is a little bit big for this speech bubble, so I'm going to make the bubble a little bit bigger, and now it all fits in there a little better. So what I learned from that last slide is, huh, that took a long time to format that, to start with one color, change it to another color. So I'm going to learn from my mistake, and I'm going to actually go back and copy that speech bubble and paste it in here, and then just edit this text that's inside of it. Now for my last slide, and I'm back out, choose one last pose for my character. So because I'm dealing with one character and going through all the slides, I don't have to back all the way out. I can leave that character, I can leave that outfit. I'm only backing out one slide to choose a new pose. So I didn't plan this out ahead of time, but I actually am creating this for a teacher who asked for a program that could do this. And rather than looking for some separate program, knowing that we already have PowerPoint and that this works on the 40,000 Chromebooks we have in our district, thought, hey, why don't we use what we have? And so that kind of explains my text choices here. Okay, so now I'm just going through and changing the fonts in each. And now I'm going to just add another character. So again, just to show you that my, my workflow is I've done everything with that one character. Uh, I'm not actually going to give her any additional dialogue because I've already sort of told my story with him. But just to show you the workflow for adding a second character, I will now go back to the first slide, insert my character, get her down to the right proportions, place her on the screen. Now I want to go to the next slide. Again, all I have to do is back up one frame and choose her next pose. And I will do that for the next three. So the strength of Pixton in my mind was when I was trying to do this without Pixton and I was going online looking for characters to use in my comics, it's really hard to find the same character in multiple different poses. And so that's what Pixton does for you is you have characters, a number of characters, about 25 different characters in a number of different poses. So it's everything you need and this one I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to move her over here, and then we're going to turn her around. So that's true of all of the poses in Pixton, is they're fully reversible. All right, now we run into the next issue with being online. I have three choices, print full pages, print notes, or print handouts. And if you see, the handouts look like that. I'm sure you've gotten those in professional developments over the years, but that's not what I'm looking for. So at this point, uh, what I want to do is I want to print this out as a PDF looking like a comic strip. And this just doesn't have those options online. So I can very well just share this PowerPoint with my teacher when I have completed my comic strip. I can just turn it in exactly like this. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to open it in the desktop app so I can get it to look exactly like I want my finished product to look like. So this is much you can do online. You can do all the creation. Again, it's just the final formatting that I want a little bit differently. So I'm going to print all my slides, but instead of full page, what I want is that four slides horizontal. Now, I would like them to appear bigger than that, so I'm actually going to change from portrait to landscape. Okay, and you'll see when I switch from a real physical printer to printing to PDF that uh, it'll reduce the borders a little bit. So that is what I want to save and share with the teacher who asked me about this. So from this point, the workflow for the student would be if they are limited to the online version, say on a Chromebook, then they can just share this PowerPoint with their teacher. If they have the ability to do this on the desktop, then they can print out as a PDF or physically print out, but they can print out as a PDF so it looks like a comic strip and then share that with the teacher instead. So uh, we wanted to show you how much of this is possible with the online version, but also be realistic about the limitations there and show you the added benefits of being able to do this in PowerPoint. So I hope you have gotten a lot out of this uh, comic strip and storyboard creator. Hope you get to use it with your students and don't forget to subscribe.